When walking through the galleries and rooms in St. Cecilia's Hall, I often like to imagine how these spaces were used in the past. Who walked these halls, attended concerts, and occupied the building we now call home? St. Cecilia's has an incredible history and has lived many lives. Everything from a concert hall to a paper warehouse, a dance hall to a bar, and a place of worship to a place of learning. Built by the Edinburgh Musical Society and named after the patron saint of music, St. Cecilia's Hall was the first purpose-built concert hall in Scotland and opened in 1763. It was a building with a grand entrance off Nidri's Wind, where elegantly dressed concert attendees would arrive in their sedan chairs, ready to climb the double staircase and enter the elliptical concert room. The building featured weekly performances by members of the society, and the great and good of Edinburgh would gather in this room to hear the latest musical works of the day. Sadly, the heyday of the concert room, though glorious, was short-lived. Despite becoming the focus of the best performances in Scotland, the Musical Society succumbed to mounting debts and competition from new venues in town, particularly places built in the stylish new town. As audience members moved to Edinburgh's new town, they no longer wanted to journey over to dark medieval old town, and concert attendance began to dwindle. In 1798, the final concert was held and the musical society folded. Three years later, St. Cecilia's Hall was sold to the Baptist Church, who used the concert room as their place of worship for the next nine years. In 1809, St. Cecilia's Hall was purchased by the Freemasons, who made dramatic changes. Not only did they add a two-story addition to the south side of the building in 1812, but they also transformed the interior of the concert room, converting it to a rectangle. St. Cecilia's was then known as the Grand Lodge of Scotland. What the Masons did in our building, well, one can only guess. The next owner was the Edinburgh Town Council, who purchased St. Cecilia's in 1844. At this time, the building was used as a school for the poor children of the neighborhood, and it was said that over 800 students attended classes in this small space. Can you imagine the noise? The next step on our journey comes in 1890, when the building was sold again, and this time divided up into many businesses. There were four shops on the ground floor, which included a book binding and printing business, a glass blower, a furniture store, and a Japaner, which was a person who specialized in decorating furniture. Eventually, the four shops at ground level were knocked through, and this section became the Bridge Bar. While the Bridge Bar was a popular watering hole, the rest of St. Cecilia's became a place that I would have loved to have seen, as our concert room was transformed into the very popular Excelsior Ballroom, which was an Art Deco decorated swing dance hall that flourished throughout the Second World War and into the 1950s. As the swing dance craze began to wane, the owner of the building, Miss Madeline Cairns, decided to sell. But she was looking for a buyer who would return St. Cecilia's back to its original purpose. That buyer was the University of Edinburgh, who purchased the building in 1959. The university returned the concert room to its elliptical shape and opened the building as a concert hall and museum in 1968. Since 1968, we have continued to care for St. Cecilia's Hall and its priceless musical instrument collection, which has grown from a display of 19 keyboard instruments from the Raymond Russell collection to over 400 musical instruments which span 500 years of musical history. The building has had such a rich history, and I love that over the past three centuries it has come full circle. It is truly a building worthy to be named after the patron saint of music.